Okay, and uh, here we go. So again, uh, my name is Tom Rosine. I'm going to be talking about the fourth quarter 2014 equity funds review. And basically, I always come up to this slide, and it's one of those really, really wordy slides, something that you can take a look at in the PDF uh, piece. I like to do a capture of what the big, you know, big issues were uh, for the quarter, and on a month-by-month -month basis, uh, take a look at it. We see that we really kind of had a whole hum quarter, uh, but it certainly was a strong enough quarter to, first of all, uh, bring us to our, our ninth quarter in ten as far as plus side performance, and our third consecutive year, the end of our third consecutive year of plus side performance as well. And really, the if you take a look at how things uh, panned out, there were three kind of major issues that people took a look at, and that was certainly the uh, Eurozone slowdown, uh, massive slump in oil prices, we'll talk about that. The Ebola scare was certainly a concern, and you know, general economic weakness overall, and of course we had uh, you know, terrorist activities and the like that have uh, you know, kept people on edge. But on the flip side, uh, from a domestic point of view, uh, we have seen some very strong economic numbers come out, particularly in the area of uh, n better than expected non-farm payrolls. As we go through each one of the monthly areas, we can see that uh, if we're not talking about better than expected earnings, we're talking about better than expected uh, non-farm payroll reports. And in fact, one of the reports actually jumped to 321,000, and I think that's the story that kept people going. For the ninth uh, consecutive month, we reported non-farm payrolls in excess of 200,000 or more, and I think that really kept uh, investors excited. Um, and, and so we saw this increase in volatility because of the concerns I mentioned before, but they were also uh, benefited from, again, these better than expected uh, economic reports. And then I think icing on the cake and really what drove a lot of the market movements, uh, certainly uh, on the upward side, was a, a quantitative easing uh, that was announced by China, Japan, and Europe. Um, and at first, people, I, I think, were very, pretty excited about that. And then they started saying, well, gosh, that's really kind of showing maybe some global uh, concerns out there that we're going to have global slowing. And I think that kept people really at bay. So we talked about, uh, you know, throughout the months, uh, basically the S&P and the Dow hitting all new, all, all new time highs. It was always at the margin. Um, it, the Dow hit uh, uh, 38 uh, new highs uh, uh, for the year, and quite a few of those, uh, that 38th actually happened in December. Um, the S&P hit its, uh, I think it was its uh, 42nd uh, consecutive, or consecutive high, 42nd high of the year as well. So it's these stories that we kept seeing, but people were going, well, how come we're not seeing it returns? Again, it was all at the margin. Certainly in December, we saw the uh, Dow uh, um, uh, touch 18,000, actually go above 18,000. And then uh, it's some disappointing news at the end, uh, and it really had to do with uh, gas and oil uh, prices. Uh, certainly uh, took the wind out of the sails and gave us a negative return in December. So not a real big thing, but three things that I saw is that out-of-favor issues, domestic-seeking uh, 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 investments were uh, popular, and we'll find that out as we go through here. Um, and also interest-seeking type of instruments were also very popular. And relative safety. So while large cap funds uh, basically underperform their small cap brother, and we'll talk more about that as we go, we can see that uh, on the bottom slide as well, small cap value is uh, even in the down, down part of December was one of the top performers there. Um, people were actually putting money uh, to work, actually flows and investments. Uh, Pat will talk about this later in the large, uh, into, uh, uh, um, into the small cap area, but really large caps actually were the long-term winner. Um, and so we saw that people were going after kind of a large cap safety area, primarily on the domestic side as well. So again, all this type of behavior brought us to uh, basically one of our, uh, you know, one of our strong ninth quarter uh, gain uh, in 10. Uh, everybody knows last quarter we had some negative uh, returns, but uh, this quarter we did uh, pretty good as far as keeping on the positive side, 1.92% return for the quarter. And as we take a look at that, um, you know, better than expected U.S. economics and the fresh rounds of global central banker intervention really kept investors interested, but mainly on the USDE side. So if we look at uh, the United States diversified equity side, up, up 4.6%, that's the first quarter in four that they've actually posted the top performance of the groups. But if we look at the bottom, and this is where people were concerned, world equity funds were down 2.57%. Uh, so certainly investors were concerned in that area. Interesting enough, 62 out of the 96 classifications we have in the equity and mixed asset universe basically had plus side performance, so that was a, a big boon. 72% of all equities and mixed asset funds were on the plus side uh, in the black for the quarter. And at the top of the game, remember I was telling you people were looking for interest, 
they were looking for safety and they were looking for out of favor issues. Here we have kind of the story, real estate funds up 13%. It's the first quarter in 10 that they've risen to the top of the charts uh, in this group, followed by uh, commodity uh, um, uh, specialty funds. And the commodity specialty funds basically are short biased or, or two times. And uh, basically they benefited from all the commodities just getting crushed uh, man, it wasn't all the commodities actually. Uh, gold didn't do all that bad, but a lot of the commodities took uh, took it on the chin this quarter, and they were up 2.75 percent. The commodity specialty funds because of the short bias uh, interest in that. And then the last piece of a top performer was uh, if we take a look at the health biotechnology group, up 10 percent, and certainly the. Uh, uh, idea of Ebola and virology uh, research actually played, I think, a big part in that. And also, we had some growth-oriented focuses. Again, growth was out of favor, uh, and it's something that did well. At the very bottom, as we can see, commodity, CME, commodity energy funds, was down 29.93%. Natural resources uh, funds took it on the chin down 18.01%. And global natural resources lost 14.59%. Uh, and this is really due to this next slide. Dollar was on, a, you know, has been on a, a grand run. We've been seeing a lot of strength in the U.S. dollar. But in particular, we saw oil declining 40.41% uh, for the quarter. It closed uh, the uh, uh, December 31st down uh, 53.27, so it down to $53.27 per barrel. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys thought that would be something we'd see anytime soon. It certainly was not in my, my, uh, my predictions at all. So we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, the United States Diversified Equity Funds. And again, uh, generally strong economic numbers um, basically kept uh, investors interested, and not only interested in that, but the more risk averse on global economy kept them really, again, focused uh, in the United States sector. Uh, let's call it the domestic equity type of fund. So it was the best macro group, not only for the month, and the quarter, but also for the year. As we see at the top of the group, I was telling you there's been this change of pace. People kind of, I'm going to say bottom shopping, if you will, or f finding out of favors in there. But basically, small cap growth uh, equity funds uh, returned 8.1%. Small cap core funds uh, had a nice 7.18%. And with this strong performance, we certainly are expecting to see dedicated short bias funds down 3.08%. Uh, 3 and the only other negative in the group was the alternative equity market neutral classification at minus 0.12%. So, you know, basically around hovering around zero. If we take a look at December, though, uh, the, the out-of-favor issues um, basically um, kind of flipped to the top. People were concerned about what was going on. United States Diversified Equity Funds ranked number two out of four, but it was down 2.92%. And how that happened is basically we saw dedicated short bias funds jump to the top, and these large caps that people invested into in diversified leverage funds, uh, equity leverage funds is what we call them now, uh, losing 4.46%. The year-to-date uh, we've seen some very strong returns, 7.56%. I think that's a, a nice icing on it. It's certainly not 14, 20, 30% return, but certainly a nice icing on the cake of what's been happening over the last several years as far as plus side performance goes. And if we take a look at this, really, one of the things that uh, pops out to me is we take a look, small caps are up the top. Uh, it, it has been quite a while. Uh, you know, uh, last quarter I was talking about how uh, the pariah was the Russell. Um, uh, 2000, and uh, right now the Russell's at the top of the game. It's uh, the new darling of the markets, and certainly that shows through with uh, small cap growth, core and value at the top, and of course at the bottom, alternative equity market neutral funds and dedicated short bias funds um, at the bottom. This is the fifth quarter and sixth that dedicated short bias funds were at the bottom. So let's move on now to our 4x3 matrix. Uh, basically for the quarter, uh, we see that uh, small cap funds and um, uh, growth funds actually did better. So small cap funds for the first quarter in five uh, basically were the top performer, 7.40%. And then for the second consecutive quarter, growth has actually been uh, what people have clamored for, 5.51%. And we can see small cap uh, growth funds at 8.10% the best performing in the group, and uh, this is where helped along by, we uh, went to our kind of our active indices and uh, took a look at our products and found that healthcare, information technology, and consumer discretionary were the causes of that outperformance of 8.10%. So that's kind of a nice story there. 
As we move on to the three or four by three matrix for the month of December, things change a little bit. Small caps are still in favor. The second month in three that small caps stay in favor, uh, but it's the first month in five that value actually rose to the top at uh, zero point seven eight percent. And here, when we took a look at the active indices and compared to see who, uh, what sectors actually seem to be the top performers, financial stocks actually in this small sector uh, did better. Um, and then information technology and then the industrial sector uh, stocks as well did very well. That brings us on to our sector equity funds. And this group, uh, as of last quarter, had the four best and four worst performing classifications in the universe. Um, this was primarily due on a couple of things. First of all, we saw the uh, United States dollars, a recent tear, and that really impacted um, the uh, interest, uh, I'm sorry, really impacted the commodities uh, type of funds. And so at the bottom, we see commodity energy funds down 29.93, as I told you about, natural resources funds down 18%, and global natural resources funds down 14.5%. But at the top of the group, again, we have real estate funds, um, commodity specialty funds, and health biotech uh, taking uh, basically charge and lead for the entire, not only the group, but for the universe as well. They did uh, very strongly. Uh, it was third best performing classification uh, for December, and uh, basically uh, contrarian plays were in play uh, in December, so we saw the commodity specialty funds, and commodities continued on their slide as we talked about oil taking it on the chin, and we have our alternative uh, fi uh, um, man oh, managed future funds, sorry. That Forgetting the managed portion of that, 1.80% uh, and then real estate funds at the top uh, with that group as well. And as I said, I, you know, part of this story, though, when we get back to the health uh, biotech area is, you know, there was some, uh, you know, recent news, uh, mergers and acquisitions, some stories out there. But really, you know, I think it is the idea that bio, uh, biotech funds did very well and virology was uh, kind of a, a buzzword for a while, uh, certainly keeping them at the top of the game. Again, year to date, up 6.13%. As we take a look at the um, this slide, basically the slide has given us again at the top the outer favor issues. Um, we're basically at the top with bi health biotechnology funds, both global uh, as well as domestic, and then also real estate funds. People were looking for that interest rate kicker. That said, a lot of analysts have been talking about uh, real estate funds and the big boom that they've had. They were out of favor for a couple of quarters, so people jump back in, bottom shopping, and they are a little bit fearful that if the Fed starts raising interest rates, this could be an area to uh, keep an eye on as far as uh, underperforming other classifications. At the very bottom, as we know, commodity-related issues were at the bottom for the quarter. This brings us on to our World Equity Funds Group. And uh, economic slowdown in the, uh, Europe, uh, along with Greece's uh, uh, snap election that's coming up, played on investors' psyche. Uh, really took them out of the game for the second quarter in a row. Uh, it was the worst performing classification. This quarter was down 2.57%. But we have some good stories uh, that are to be kind of shared around. First of all, China and Japan and uh, the ECB all cut their interest rates. And again, while many might have thought this was too late or too slow or maybe even a sign of, of global slowing, uh, other people saw some opportunity here. One thing that did very well, China region funds uh, did well, 4.88%. Um, this is not necessarily because of, you know, their, their you know, idea of, of, of uh, lower interest rates and, and, and whatnot. That might have helped a bit. Really, I think a lot of this had to do with China's stock select scheme. Basically opened the Shanghai Exchange for retail investors uh, that were not in the country. And I think that uh, offered a little bit more money into that market, and, and people were certainly encouraged by that. And, of course, India Region Fund's up 4.59%. Uh, that was at the top last quarter as well. And this is still benefiting from the recent pro-business elections uh, that went on in that group as well. And then Global uh, Large Cap Growth Funds was the next uh, top performing group. After that, we get the Latin American Funds and Emerging Market Funds, who, by the way, you know, start looking at Chile and some of the other countries, uh, basically uh, basic ma uh, materials are kind of their, their bread and butter, along with uh, uh, oil. Um, and so we've seen Latin American emerging markets at the bottom. Uh, Latin America down 12.87 percent, emerging markets down 5.32 percent is not a big stretch of the imagination uh, at all. And as we take a look at uh, the overall one-year return, uh, it's down 2.24 percent. It's just because of all the stuff we've been talking about. Certainly there's a lot of concerns out there uh, in the market of whether we are entering a global slowdown or not. And uh, um, uh, recent report even this morning talked about uh, the lack of inflation and certainly um, maybe the economy is spiraling into a deflationary cycle, which could cause um, a recession and the like. Uh, people are obviously going to keep an eye on that as we go.
If we take a look at the three by three matrices for this group, they both are very similar. Both of them uh, veered away from the U.S. pattern, and in this case, multi-cap for both groups, whether it was international, or global, uh, did well, and growth did well. Um, that's uh, a little bit more in tune with the uh, USDE side, uh, but certainly not the multi-cap. Um, we see that if you take a look at the bottom graph, the uh, Lipper Global Diversified Equity Funds, they benefited from more focus, obviously, in the United States, and were able to put up some positive returns where if we played the pure international play, uh, certainly we're uh, looking at all negatives. A uh, best performer on the international group was down 2.10%. That's large cap growth. And on the same thing on the, uh, on the uh, global play, uh, large cap growth up 1.2%. Uh, for the quarter, so those uh, those were kind of the international numbers, and, and we expected them with uh, kind of the lousy showing uh, on the international side. Taking a look at this, we basically see that uh, the um, I'm going to say the the international and um, energy uh, focused and mineral focused uh, type of economies are at the bottom, and certainly we see that Europe. Uh, about halfway down there, European region funds uh, also posted negative returns. Uh, certainly that uh, the European weakness, uh, Eurozone weakness, and even uh, the, the Greek, uh, uh, Greek snap vote uh, is supposed to be coming up uh, in a couple of weeks now, um, uh, certainly played uh, havoc in investors' opinion on being in world equity funds. So that brings me to my end, and bas bas basically, whoop, I got one more slide. Sorry about that. That brings us back to uh, our mixed asset funds, and I kind of slapped by that. Uh, it, it's pretty easy for me to do. We don't talk a lot about the mixed asset funds because they run the range of fixed income and uh, uh, equity assets put together in, in different um, glide path studies. And so investors don't seem to talk about that a lot, but it is our uh, best, uh, second best performing group for the quarter and for the month. Uh, up 1.18% for the quarter. December is down, but it's still a, a second best performer, down 0.95%. But the reason I bring this up on a frequent basis is because it's where most of the money is flowing, at least from a domestic uh, investment point of view. Uh, let me give an example. The United States Diversified Equity Funds actually saw, this is through November 30th, by the way, so it'll differ a little bit from what uh, Pat's going to tell you about, but USD funds saw about $45.6 billion in outflows, while the mixed asset funds saw about 103. Four billion dollars in inflows, and the closest macro group uh, to this, to the mixed asset groups, is world equity funds, only seen about 84 uh, billion in net inflows uh, so far in 2014 through November. So, of the 172 uh, billion dollars of net new money coming into equity funds, again up till November, um, ec mixed ac asset funds certainly has the lion's share, uh, the super majority at 103.4 billion dollars. So it's worth us keeping an eye on as well. Let me go out to my last points, and that's basically my outlook, so to speak. And I, I usually just list my concerns and my pros. So, you know, certainly the market is a little bit longer in the tooth. We had an earnings per share announcement that we got from our uh, brethren at the uh, Thompson Reuters Proprietary Research, who basically saw so far this quarter for S&P 500 97 negative announcements to 19 positive. And what that breaks down to is you take the um, basically the negative over, over the uh, positive announcements and you come up with a negative to positive ratio. And we're at 5.1 right now. Um, last uh, year at this time, we were at 8.8. .8, so we're better than we were. However, we're well above the average of 2.6. Um, so that just tells us that, uh, you know, with the gas uh, oil issue, uh, coming out right now that uh, there's a lot of companies out there that are a little bit nervous on uh, meeting their expectations. Um, the ISM manufacturing numbers actually all declined. Uh, the ma ISM manufacturing was down to 55.5. The non-manufacturing was at 56.2. However, I'd like to point out, they still are indicating expansion, so it's not all that bad. Oil prices certainly are a concern. Uh, I looked at the, before coming in here, I see that the oil prices were at 45.60 a barrel. Um, uh, that's obviously a concern for the market and a concern for our uh, uh, folks uh, doing oil exploration here in the United States. And so uh, there's a global concern that uh, maybe there uh, might be a recession on, a global recession going on, and so people are keeping an eye on that. And, of course, I mentioned already the EU and uh, Greece leading the fight, uh, a flight to safety. Um, there is a lot of concern about Europe and certainly about the snap vote for Greece. Uh, it could be to the point where Greece actually – um, if they, you know, violate some of their uh, agreements for uh, uh, lending, um, that they actually could be uh, removed from the EU, and that would not be a good thing for our stability. On the flip side, China, Japan, and the ECB all cut interest rates, 
and uh, that was a good thing, and uh, we're certainly going to keep an eye to see what the ECB does here coming up in the next several days, uh, if not weeks, uh, to find out if, uh, again, this, this drop in uh, inflation and actually into a deflationary period is going to cause them to even be more aggressive. Non-farm payrolls came in uh, in December 252. It's great. Unemployment rate dropped to 5.6%. The only other thing that in December, though, is that wages dropped as well. Um, that's good for the idea that the Fed won't necessarily pull the trigger that quickly. Uh, but again, that might be another reason why people are saying, hey, you know, maybe a global recession is possible as we go down there. Reuters estimates, however, puts Q4 earnings at uh, 4%. And of the 21 funds or stocks that have already reported for the S&P, 86 of those S&P 500 constituents have actually already reported Q4 earnings in excess of analyst expectations. So certainly that was all good. Well, that's it for me. I'm going to go ahead and hand off to my cohort, uh, Jeff Turnahoy.